I'm Scott L. Miller. This is my vlog of daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua. Today I'm going to be covering a century of major earthquakes here in Nicaragua to give you a rundown of what they've been like over the last 100 years. And we're going to have a discussion about whether or not you should be, based on this information, worried about earthquakes when you're going to be visiting or, more importantly, if you would be living here in Nicaragua. So we're going to get to that right after the bump. If you're watching this in real time, then happy Semana Santa. That will be coming out next week. I do these seven days early, so it'll be in the middle of Semana Santa when this comes out. For those who don't know, Semana Santa is the holy week and the busiest week of the year for tourism in Nicaragua. The beaches fill up with local Nicaraguan tourism and you have no way to get a room or anything on the beach. It's absolutely crazy. The, the restaurants fill up, the hotels fill up, the beach is just full of people. It's a bit crazy. So that's going on right now. Now I get a lot of questions from people about is it dangerous living in Nicaragua because of the earthquake? Some people ask about volcanoes and some other things too, but the earthquakes come up pretty often and those who watch my shorts know that I try to report on any earthquake over a 4.0. Anything under a 4.0 anywhere in the world is pretty much a non-issue right? A three, two, whatever. Those are itty bitty earthquakes. At four, you start to be able to feel them, but a lot of people will still be like, what are you talking about? Nothing happened. But that's what we report on and larger so that you guys get an idea of how often they happen, what it's like, what we're feeling here, uh, so that you can gauge it yourself a little bit. I do that on purpose to give you a real world look at what's going on with the earthquake situation because people really are nervous about it. If you're coming from North America or Europe where earthquakes aren't that common, unless you're in California, that's a little bit different, then you may have a very different impression of this region because this is the Ring of Fire. We do have loads of earthquakes, loads of volcanoes, and all the things that are associated with them. So it's worth taking a moment to really kind of give you a picture of what things are like here uh, so that you know what you're getting yourself into. And I think with this context, you'll have a better understanding. So we're just going to break down the major earthquakes as, according to Wikipedia, how Wikipedia defines notable earthquakes. Uh, they have an official rule on this uh, that have happened within the country. Uh, now, now, I'm going to be giving the magnitudes as Wikipedia reports them. These are not the magnitudes that are necessarily agreed upon uh, by all parties. These are, I believe, derived from the USGS, the United States Geological Survey, which is the world's leading and foremost uh, earthquake monitoring and research and whatever organization. Uh, but sometimes the um, seismology here in Nicaragua or in other places have reported these as larger or smaller. So there's not always an agreement on them, but these are at least going to be somewhat relative to each other. We're going to use a common source. So let's begin at the first major earthquake of the last 100 years. On the 31st of March 1931, Managua was hit with a 6.1. Now, most people hear 6.1, they think that's a pretty major earthquake. I have to say a few notes about this. Earthquakes, uh, yes, a 6.1 can be a major earthquake. It can also be a completely non-issue. There are a lot of factors and simply listing magnitude doesn't give you a really good picture. It depends where it hits. If it hits in the middle of the ocean, if it hits uh, in the middle of, of fields somewhere, a really major earthquake may have absolutely no impact on anybody. A smaller earthquake, say a 5.5, that happens in the middle of a city could be devastating. Uh, and also a earthquake that happens at the surface, just a few feet under the ground, could bring things down very quickly, whereas one that is several kilometers deep, which is very commonly the case, may, even if it's directly underneath a city, not do very much. There's a lot of factors that go into this, and these are things that people often overlook or are unaware of, uh, and so it's worth noting that just just giving these magnitudes doesn't tell you why one is really bad and another is not, but it does give you a kind of basis for comparison. So this is 1931, a 6.1 in Managua. There were a number of deaths from this. So this is a, almost 100 years ago exactly, had between one and 2,000 deaths from a fire. Now fires can be caused by earthquakes and famously San Francisco was destroyed by in 1910, not that long before this, by a major fire triggered by the great San Francisco earthquake. That is one of the reasons why Nicaragua does not run fuel gas through pipes in the ground. Everything is sh shipped in trucks. And so we have tanks everywhere because they are not, sorry about the coughing dog, they are not affected by earthquakes unless it's so big that your tank falls off the truck or whatever. So that's one of the things that Nicaragua does, and we'll be talking about that as we go, to protect itself against earthquakes because they happen all the time 
things are designed around it. Now, a hundred years ago, that may have not been the case, and maybe this is just an accident. You know, a lot of times people had kerosene lamps or whatever. I know that a hundred years ago, most people had electric light, but there was a lot more potential, and there still is for people who are cooking with open flame. An earthquake can cause something to fall onto a stove, catch on fire, catch a house, catch the next house. So fires can happen from earthquakes, even when the earthquake itself is not causing the specific damage. So this was a fire in Managua in 1931. We went a 20 year period without a major earthquake again and didn't have the next one until the 8th of February, I'm sorry, the 2nd of August, 1951 in Cosaguina. Hopefully I get that right. It was a 5.8 and a thousand people died at that time in 1951. Now, uh, there's another, I'm going to, um, I don't know exactly what this stands for, but there is a level of earthquake marker that is used at times to denote how serious a quake is. And some of these quakes don't have one, mostly because if they're older, they didn't have a good way to measure it at the time. Uh, and later ones, now we have them pretty often. So I'm gonna mention these as well. So these will be different than the magnitude, but this is a, uh, a number that takes into uh, account at least how close it is to the surface and how much it actually shakes real people versus how much it shakes uh, somewhere that doesn't matter, or very deep, that kind of thing. So the 1931 was a level six, which is uh, a pretty good earthquake. This one was was not listed. Uh, so a thousand people died, that was 1951. In 1956, Managua had another earthquake, this time a 7.2, and it's uh, new magnitude is listed as a seven. This one has no listed deaths, but did have some building damage. Now we're still in the 1950s, just five years after the last one but a 7.2 is definitely a very large earthquake. In 1968, Managua was hit again, this time with just a 4.8. So this is a very small one and it does not have a uh, general magnitude listing at all. And all that happened was moderate damage. That means that uh, maybe not even buildings, but other things like uh, roads or bridges may have some amount of damage. In 1972, and this is the important one, and this is the reason that people are afraid of earthquakes, Managua had a 6.3. Now this is very important. It was a 6.3. That is not a very big earthquake. We just had a 7.2 and a 6.1, and those caused one, no damage at all, well just building damage, and the other uh, just a fire. In 1972, we had a 6.3, but it listed as a 9. So notice that big discrepancy over the other numbers. But this caused between 4 and 11,000 deaths. More than 20,000 were injured, and it is listed as extreme damage. This earthquake liquefied the city of Managua, and every building of any height came right down because they depend on that solid ground to hold them up. So this was an unbelievable catastrophe. It didn't just kill a lot of people, didn't just injure a lot of people. It displaced far more and caused the entire design of the city of Managua to be wiped out and they had to essentially start over and rebuild the city. So Managua, for all intents and purposes, is a new city built since 1972. If you look at pictures of it before 1972, it looked, it acted, it seemed nothing like the city that exists today. And then the rebuilding of it has been its own story over time. But this is when you go and look at Managua, and people have questions about Managua, its outlying suburbs, its city design, its buildings, all of that, Every time they say, why is something like this? The answer is always because of the 1972 earthquake, either because the earthquake did the thing or because people have adjusted how they live in Managua, how they build in Managua, how they design the city based on the fear that an earthquake like this will happen again. Managua is extremely prepared for a new magnitude nine to hit the city again and anticipate no damage and no loss of life. The city is completely built to handle that. They have accommodated for that very much uh, and we've not had quite that strong again, but the prior to that date, everything was built with the idea that you didn't have to protect against earthquakes. And after that date, everything was built with that as the absolute primary uh, consideration. 20 years later, in 1992, so this is two back-to-back -back incidences, the city of Leon, where I'm recording right now, was hit with a 7.7. .7. So this is a absolutely massive 
overall earthquake and the largest that Nicaragua has ever had. However, its new magnitude rating was only that of a three. So in some ways, if we compare it to the one in uh, Managua that liquefied the city at 6.3, this one is so much bigger. But when we look at its new magnitude impact number, it's so much smaller, a nine versus a three. The total death count was only 116, but this is important. Those deaths did not come from the earthquake. Those deaths came from the 8-meter or 26-foot tsunami that hit Las Panitas and Ponaloya. That is the beaches just out here in the area that I am and where I show all the time. People know that I live in Las Panitas. That was wiped out by a tsunami. And so when you look at Las Panitas, we talk about this from time to time, all of the buildings there are post-1992. So Managua, everything is built, everything tall was built after 1972. There's lots of little things that are still there. Uh, and in Las Panitas and Ponaloya, all, well, Ponaloya mostly survived. Las Panitas was absolutely wiped out and all the buildings are post-1992. Uh, especially, you know, that wipes out shacks, it, low buildings, tall buildings, everything goes when you have a tsunami of that size. So when you're looking at videos that I do in Las Panitas, notice that there are tsunami evacuation notices all over the place. Now this caused some important changes. In 1992, there was no warning on tsunamis. So the degree to which this did damage was unbelievable. It hit the village with eight meters of water. That's an incredible amount. And they had no warning. Today, things are very different. There is uh, a collaboration with the United States uh, early warning, the Pacific warning system for, for tsunamis uh, that has sensors all throughout the Pacific Ocean. And if we're getting a tsunami, typically they will come from Asia or possibly Polynesia. Uh, and when they come towards us, they have to pass Hawaii and we can get about nine hours of warning, which is enough time to evacuate everybody and animals and everything get things out of your house and when you don't have to go very far there is high ground in las panitas you just have to know to go there and have access to it know where you got to go which roads to get down and not have it blocked by traffic uh that has changed things incredibly and a siren system has been put in at the beach which is tested from time to time so if you hear those sirens you're out on the beach that means that there is a detected tsunami and you need to get out of there so these things have changed everything our fear of tsunamis is very different of course you still anytime you live on any ocean anywhere all ocean frontage has the fear of tsunami new york city has fear of tsunami and, and one of the biggest in the world because they are actually in the path of a projected tsunami that could happen in the future from a known rock slide that is anticipated well they have to have warning systems it's always a risk so here in las Panitas, yes it has happened in the past it has not happened since you but everybody who lives on any beach anywhere always has to be alert to the signs of a tsunami, be ready to listen for the alerts, know where to look up uh, where you get information, how to find out what the early warning system is saying, all those kinds of things. That is the nature of living on water. Leon, yes, has been hit, but I don't know, I don't have a reason to believe that that's gonna cause a specific additional risk. Alaska's hit with tsunamis quite frequently, British Columbia, so living in those areas, one of the things that's important here is that many people live uh, at sea level. A lot of the people, the beach is right there. So like the houses are actually on the sand. If you live like that, you're likely to get hit by a tsunami. Even if it's a very small one, there's very little you can do to get away from it, except for just walk away, but your house is gonna be there. But if you look at some of the other beaches in Nicaragua, they have cliffs. Living on a cliff of almost any size at all is enough to protect against any possible tsunami. So it just depends how you live, where you are, but anytime you're on any ocean, it is something you have to worry about because it can be that an earthquake all the way across the world is what triggers it. So you could live in the most peaceful part of the American Atlantic seaboard and think, well, there's no earthquakes here. There's nothing I have to worry about. That is simply not the case. You have to worry about earthquakes and rock slides and events happening on the west coast of Africa or southern Portugal. These are things that may end up affecting you, but you would have no idea that they could affect you uh, and may happen many hours later. So that's uh, it's just part of living on the ocean. So a lot of people have asked about that and, and should they be concerned? Yeah with tsunamis, it's on the ocean. So you, you do have to be concerned. There's only the people who live directly on the beach or like right across the street. If you're much farther than that, tsunamis really aren't much of a risk. Um, and as long as you have you know about the early detection, know what your risks are, know that your house could be washed away, but you'll be okay, you know, gauge uh, your decision making from that. And that is one of the reasons that people sometimes choose to live off the direct beach and simply nearby uh, because they're very much protected from that. One year later in 1993, Carrasso, which is just south of Managua, had a 5.9 uh, magnitude earthquake, which got the new magnitude ranking of a 5. 
This one caused no structural damage, but did have one death caused by heart attack. Some people just find earthquakes scary. It doesn't take too much uh, if you're very fragile to, uh, to simply have a heart attack from that. The next major earthquake came in 2000 in Masaya. This is southeast of Managua. This was a 5.4 or on the new scale, A6. This one had a total death count of seven. Notice these numbers are dropped off significantly. 1972, we had uh, the last time that we had really major death from earthquake in 1992 is the last time we had made last major death from tsunami. A lot of things changed because of these two events. The country took note that earthquakes were something it had to protect against, and it has done so. And then 20 years later, it took note that tsunamis are something it needs to protect against. And in that case, it took a collaborative effort with the United States and some other countries who put together a system that they can all warn each other about events and have early warnings and, and lots of information. So the fear of these things have changed significantly during the course of the last century, as you can imagine. In 2012, so 12 years later, Usulutan had a 7.3 or a new scale 5. This caused no deaths, but did cause some injuries. But what was important is that this one had a uh, 6 meter tsunami in El Salvador, not Nicaragua. So sometimes that happens. Like I said, you have an earthquake in one place and the tsunami happens somewhere else. In this case, the tsunami hit in a different location. In 2014, Managua suffered another earthquake at a 6.1. This one had a level six, only one death, 266 injuries. This was a pretty significant earthquake, very little damage. And remember, you're talking about a big city, more than a million people. So having just one death out of that, like that can happen. But any event on any given day can cause one death out of a million people. So these are really absolutely tiny numbers. These are things you should never emotionally react to. Right now, thousands of deaths, the possible liquefaction, yes, that's something you need to be aware of. But single deaths from an earthquake, definitely not things you need to, to register. Just a few months later, also in 2014, the Gulf of Fonseca, this is in the northwest uh, portion of Nicaragua where it borders Honduras and El Salvador, had a 7.3. So this is the second largest of all the listed. The 1956 was a 7.2, so this is bigger than that, and hit a new scale of 7. So this is a very dramatic earthquake. Uh, that one had a total deaths of 4 and some injuries. So again, really major earthquake. This is still 20 years ago now, and only four deaths. In 2022, we had, and I was here for this one, a 6.6 in Carrasso. Again, Carrasso is just south of Managua. This one had a new magnitude of five, and it had only minor damage. Minor damage means buildings are not really damaged. Nothing, nothing's really happened. Some people may have things fall off shelves and get broken, stuff like that. Your house does shake. but absolutely no deaths. Now that one is a 6.6. .6, and I, this is why I noted at the beginning that the rankings, different places do not always agree. Nicaragua listed that one as a 7.1. And I can tell you that everyone in the country felt it. We we're all calling each other. It was dramatic. Even up here in Leon, uh, over that distance, it was like, holy, wow, that was a huge quake. And we're calling people. Managua is like, the phones are ringing. Everyone's like, did you feel that? Are you okay? Where did it happen? We're all looking it up, trying to figure out what happened and it, that it happened in Carrasso. And we felt it so far away, so strongly. Those in Managua got shaken around like crazy, but no buildings came down. No buildings were damaged. This is really important. The story we get here over the course of the last century, and that's the last major one, all the ones I've been reporting are since that one. That is the one that triggered me to think about it, and that was almost exactly two years ago. We've lived through so many earthquakes here, and one of the things that I say to people is there's really nothing to worry about. All of the times that people have been injured are either long ago when buildings were built differently, or they're in very specific situations like the heart attack or someone was just happened to be in a spot where, where something really, uh, uh, unpredictable had happened, right? We don't know why there's one death here, a two deaths here in, in some of these big quakes, but when things shake, there's always a possibility that something's gonna fall, someone's gonna slip, some, some, someone's gonna get scared and do something foolish and end up getting hurt. But of quakes that caused major damage, we have had none for more than half a century. All of the damaging earthquakes, and there aren't really that many, happened in the first half of the last century, not in the last half. And the only event that's had any major impact in the last 50 years is not that far from 50 years ago, and that is the tsunami here in the Leon area. And 
all of these things have been protected against since then. But even if you went back 100 years and lived in the barrio like I do or lived in sensible, sensible buildings like they're currently constructing in Managua, you would have had no real risk. The fire being the one thing that is different. You always have to worry about someone having a fire. But all those things have been protected against so much since then. We have better fire departments. We have better fire protections and codes. We have different buildings. All those things add up to we really don't see these traditional events as risks as in the way that they were in the past. So when you're looking at places like Nicaragua, especially Nicaragua, who goes through major earthquakes on a regular basis, maybe every five to 10 years, I think the average here is eight to nine years that a pretty major notable earthquake occurs, we're now at a point where these are things that every building you see has been proven against. The construction designs, the construction materials, the approaches, these are really well known and battle tested in major earthquakes. Managua was different. It was built brand new during the era of high rises. It wasn't an old colonial city. It was a new city with new building construction that was untested. They didn't know that an earthquake that big could happen there, and they didn't know what those buildings would do in the in event of a major earthquake. So they had a lot of things to find out, and it was a really tragic story. But everything has changed from there, and you no longer have to have those worries. And when you go around Managua, it is really apparent that the structures you're looking at are not things you have to worry about in the event of an earthquake. I know if you live in a place where you never have earthquakes, or if you live in California, where you're constantly in fear of the big one that's going to cause half of California to fall into the sea, having earthquakes feels like a scary thing. But to most of the world where earthquakes happen regularly, not that most of the world has it, but the portion of the world where it happens commonly, you'll find that people don't worry about it at all under normal circumstances because they've been dealing with it every day. It's part of everyday life. It's kind of like if you move to a place where it rains all the time, no one worries about there being a rainy day. But if you move to a desert and you have a couple of rainy days in a row, you're worried about floods. Yes, if you live in a place that never has earthquakes like I did. I grew up in western New York and we had one earthquake that I think was a 4.3 when I was 15 years old and it caused major damage. Bridges collapsed, houses split. The entire valley that I grew up near dropped between two and three inches overnight. It was a huge deal. But it was a tiny earthquake. If that earthquake happened here, no one would notice. But up there, because everything was built and everyone lived in a world where they assumed earthquakes could never happen, even a small one, did some damage. It didn't kill anybody, so that was great. We, we made it unscathed, but it did some really noticeable damage. It changed the path of highways. A river disappeared. It was quite surprising how much that was able to do. So here, because it happens all the time, it really is different. You don't have to uh, worry about it. None of us do. We do feel it. We talk about it. It's a point of interest, just like the weather is. Sure, a rainy day is interesting, and an earthquake that we all feel is interesting. We're not actually scared of it. We're not worried about it. We're not thinking that there's a big one coming that we've got to be ready for. And the tsunamis are a little bit scarier because even if we can... we are prepared for it, we're still going to lose our houses or whatever. Like, there's no protecting them against a tsunami. But we do know that that one tsunami was a freak accident and the chances that it's going to happen again like that is extremely low. And if it does, well, it's one of the things we plan around and we have good safety measures to make sure that us and our kids and our dogs and our friends that we're going to be safe and it's only going to be a loss of material goods that can be replaced. And it does cause some decision-making changes. There are some things that I don't want to store down on the beach because they could, if it was something very nostalgic, something I would really be unable to replace, I don't want it to be there. I want to keep it someplace like here where it's protected from the beach, from the waves and the surf. Uh, so a few of those kinds of decision things, but mostly a house can be rebuilt and you simply build it into your plants. Well, we know the tsunami could come every one or two or 300 years. Don't invest in the structure on the beach too much. Be prepared to rebuild. That's why you can't get insurance in many cases in many places around the world. But you simply bank that money instead of putting it into insurance and you'll have cash on hand to rebuild what you want when the time comes. And yes, it is a tragedy when you lose your house, even if you're prepared for it. But if you're really prepared for it and you're thinking through this is something that could happen, I'm just going to plan for it and do the right things, you can minimize it to quite a significant degree. We know that all of our properties near the beach could be simply wiped away, and we plan around that. We would be sad, but it would not be the end of the world, and any unpreparedness would be our own fault because we know that it can happen. So we don't need to have insurance, and no one does because there's easy ways to do a better job than insurance would do under normal circumstances. So for those who are worried, the simple answer is don't worry about the earthquakes. Don't even think about them. There's really no reason to. You can't go get a high rise in Managua anymore. You can really not get 
high rises anywhere in the country that has earthquakes. Most of us were protected historically because we're colonial cities and you couldn't build high rises in the first place. Now high rises will all be built if they ever do get built to earthquake standards. And Managua does have one or two that have been built and one or two that are looking at being built or under construction. So this is starting to happen. Managua will start to go upward again vertically, but it will take a long time and people are gonna be very cautious. They're not gonna go super high and they're building to very stringent standards. Any building you see that's over three stories tall has big signs about how well they're designed for earthquakes and what they've done because people are aware of it. But normal buildings that are one and two stories are not things you worry about in earthquakes. If you've never been in earthquakes, you may think, well, isn't this like destructive? No, most of the world has earthquakes on a semi-regular basis and your houses don't just fall down. People don't get like, it's not a big deal. Millions and millions and millions of people go through earthquakes every single day and it's not even worth mentioning. You don't hear about it because it's not a big deal. Here, because we talk about it and we're giving a really good look into Nicaragua, you're a little bit more cognizant of the fact that we're going through regular earthquakes, but it should do anything but make you be concerned about them. What you should say is, wow, even if a really major earthquake hits Nicaragua, everyone's chill and prepared and everything is battle tested. Every building has been through major earthquakes. The very few that haven't are built with a mindset towards materials and construction designs and low lying buildings to make sure that earthquakes are not going to be a problem. If anything, it should be giving you peace of mind. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. As always, I ask that you post on social media, tell someone about the show, help spread the word, get more people involved, and uh, I'll see all of you tomorrow. And up on the screen, four more videos. If you would pick one and go watch that after this, it tells the algorithm that it should show more people our show.